Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching CSS Positioning Lesson 8 and in this video we're going to talk about relative position. Okay then guys, so pretty much everything we've done in this series so far has relied on CSS methods other than the position property to lay out elements on our web page. Things like floats or normal document flow and that's absolutely fine. If we wanted to we could create a whole website this way. However, it's not always the easiest way. That would be like painting a wall with um, an art brush when we have a roll on standby, which would be much easier to do it with. So that's what the position property in CSS can do for us. It can make things a lot easier when positioning elements on our web page. And it takes one of five values as shown on your screen right now. Static, relative, absolute, fixed, and inherit. So we're gonna dive right in and explore the relative position property in this lesson. Okay then guys, so like I say, everything on this web page has been laid out using floats or text columns or normal document flow. We've not used the position property once yet. So what we're gonna do is use it on this content div to show you what it can do. So all I need to do is give it a position property and set it to relative. Okay, and now we've set that position property, we can offset this element from the left, from the right, from the top and from the bottom. So to do it from the left, all I'd say is left 50 pixels. And that's going to move it away from the left by 50 pixels. Right? Likewise, I could change this to right, and it's going to move it away from the right by 50 pixels. These can also be minus values. So I could put minus 50, and minus 50 from the right is the same as saying 50 from the left, because it just goes in the opposite direction, right? So we also have the top and bottom we could say 50 pixels from the top, or 50 pixels from the bottom. And as well, we have the minuses that we can use. Okay, so what we're doing now is just offsetting this element by these amounts, because it has this position right here. Now, we're not removing this from normal document flow. That's very important. This is still occupying this position right here. And that's what the position relative does. Okay, so we're saying here position relative, that means it's staying in the same position right here as seen by normal document flow, but we're just offsetting it visually here. Okay, and that can be demonstrated by this. If I say bottom, my, in fact, I'll change this to top just so it's a little clearer, and I'll change it to 300 pixels. Right, save that. Oops, top. And now it overlaps this stuff right here, but we still have this big gap here. That's because this has not been taken out of normal document flow. It's still here in the eyes of the document, but we've just offset it by this amount visually. Okay, so the end user, i.e. me or you, will see it moved from that original position. So because of this, because it still leaves that gigantic space and it looks a bit weird, I tend to use the position relative just to tweak something a little bit. For example, instead of this, we could come up to this service right here, which is one of these. I'm going to grab this and say service nth child, and I'm going to say one to get the first one. In fact, all services will give a position of relative, yeah? So each one of these now has a position of relative, so I can offset each one. Then I'm grabbing the first one right here, and I'm going to give that a top value of five pixels, so it moves down a little bit. Then I'm going to get the second one. I'm going to paste it twice, because we'll go after the second and the third. And the second one, I'll say top 15 pixels, and the third one, I'll say top 25 pixels. Right, so now, this is like a little stair effect. And okay, it might not look so cool, but you can see these are the kinds of effects I would use the position relative for, just to offset elements by a little bit each time, okay? Now, there is one other use for the position relative, and that's when it's used in conjunction with position absolute. And we're gonna see that in the very next lesson. So until then, guys, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and I'll see you in the next one.